Dewan Johnson was nicknamed Mr. Excitement, but inside the gym, he was the quiet man of the Kronk Boxing Stable. Described as the unheralded workhorse of the program, he was the favorite sparring partner of Thomas Hearns. The hitman liked Johnson's speed and used him when he prepared to face Sugar Ray Leonard in 1981. Training at the Kronk since he was 12 years old, Johnson turned professional in 1979, winning his first 17 fights, including a decision over veteran Miguel Montilla and a televised appearance against Augustine Caballero. Here. As Duan is trying to force the attack, he's trying to get inside Caballero. A left hook by Duan Johnson. That's his first big blow of the fight. And he's fighting off Caballero's chest now. And that's where he wants to be during this fight. A big left hand with less than 30 seconds to go, but it was south of the border, and the referee is warning Caballero. Here in this round, the third, Duan Johnson has been able to take away Caballero's tempo. He has been at least been able to disrupt his movement. He's gotten inside, and oh, he comes lunging in, and uh, Caballero. And if he can do that effectively and work for the body, which he hasn't done so far, he might uh, turn this fight around. Good right hand for the body. I think it's safe to assume that Augustin Caballero is not a stiff walking into Detroit tonight for Duan Johnson to feast on. Duan Johnson has got a competitive opponent. Uh, through three rounds, Al Bernstein and I have it scored this way. Al has got Caballero ahead by two points. I've got Caballero ahead by one point. Johnson, as you can see, gives him a bit of a wind-up, and we've got a severe cut over the left eye of Augustin Caballero, the referee now is asking for the doctor at ringside to examine the cut. And I believe that was a result of an accidental clash of heads over here in the corner. And they're working on that eye to see what, and this would be a sad way for this fight to end because it was a good, it's been a good fight and that was from an accidental clash of heads. And Duan Johnson may have a slight, that's either blood on Johnson's face, uh, either from his own cut or from Caballero, but right now the concern is over Caballero. And the doctor says it's okay to continue. Caballero's got a nasty cut on his left eyebrow. A bit of bad luck for Caballero, who is doing so well against Duan Johnson. And we've got plenty of time here in the round. Caballero is looking to trade with Johnson. Now Caballero cannot fight Johnson from the outside. He has to press the attack because of his own cut. That accidental butt in the cut may, has completely changed his thinking in this fight. Uh, he may feel that the cut will not allow him to stand back and box, that the cut could reopen and uh, stop the fight. A right hand by Caballero, and then he ties up Duan Johnson. Johnson with a right to the body, looking to go to that cut, missed with a right hand, and they grapple again for the referee. They've got a lot of work to do on that cut at the end of this round in Caballero's corner. And Caballero is now fighting off the ropes, and that's a bad place to be against Duan. Big right hand by Johnson. Caballero switched to the righty style and was caught with a right hand. Caballero's mouth is wide open. He needs air, he's fatigued, he's bleeding from the left eyebrow. And Duan Johnson now is starting to stir up some of his excitement. A right hand by Johnson on the left forehead of Caballero. And that cut looks very bad, and Johnson now starting to clean up on the ropes. Good left hook. And the referee steps in and stops this. He stops the fight. Caballero is not allowed to continue. said some nasty words to the referee. Well, I'll tell you, that's a very peculiar call. Uh, certainly it couldn't have been because of the cut. He didn't ask the doctor again to look at it. Um, and Duan Johnson's waving for him to fight. He wants to fight some more. And the blood was not flowing into his eye. Well, Caballero I, was not blinded. No, uh, it was a cut, and certainly it could have developed into the kind of cut to stop a fight, but I, I can't imagine that he would have unilaterally decided to stop the cut, and Caballero doesn't understand why he stopped the fight either. It's certainly not on the basis of the cut, and I don't think Johnson was hurting him that badly. Let's see if we can see here where the cut occurred. Uh, a butt, I think, or an accidental butt. I'll tell you what, though, that is a mean cut. And uh, Harry Papa Kamalambus 
stopped the fight because of the cut, not because of the blows that Caballero was taking. Here's uh, the referee moving in, and still in the ring, Caballero is complaining. Caballero has left the ring. He has now come back into the ring, and now Caballero is taking his argument to Duan Johnson. And the, the ring physician is being very emphatic by saying he believed that the referee made the proper decision. And uh, that is uh, Nestor Quinones, uh, the trainer of Caballero, and uh, Caballero is waving his arms to the crowd. He does not want to stop this fight. And I'll tell you, the cut is bad, but I think they could have uh, waited till between the rounds to try and stop it. Here's Jim Ingram. Ladies and gentlemen, who's playing games with the mics? Ladies and gentlemen, the winner at two minutes, 58 seconds, Ladies and gentlemen, the winner at two minutes, 58 seconds of the fourth round by a technical knockout and still undefeated, Dewan, Mr. Excitement, Johnson. Five months later, Johnson gained a title shot at WBA junior welterweight champion Aaron the Hawk Pryor. Pryor thought little of the unknown Johnson, looking forward to prospective fights against established stars like Alexis Arguello and Sugar Ray Leonard. Johnson, meanwhile, chafed at the fact that he was listed as a 5-1 to one underdog. Johnson's trainer, Emmanuel Stewart, felt that Johnson would be too strong for Pryor. Don't be surprised, Stewart said. It's going to be a hell of a fight because Dewan is egotistical and just dying to be a champion. Run out, run across the ring, run out, swing all his best shots he got the first two rounds. And then uh, I'm just going to basically stick to my basic box and keep my hands up and going straight down the middle. So I can box or I can slug. So there ain't no thing saying that I have to stand there and slug punch for punch. Because I can box and plus hit hard while I'm boxing. So I can do both of them. So, but we won't both be still standing up after four rounds. I don't think so. Tremonti from Chicago. Well, the sight continues here. We're a little cool at ringside, and you were surprised that, uh, Ray, that, uh, that Johnson didn't warm up a little more uh, just to keep himself warm while he was waiting in there. I was very surprised, Tim, because uh, he still, I'm quite sure he has enough experience to know that a fight can get cold very easy, especially waiting. And in this cold building, because it's cold in here. Johnson has shown absolutely no sign of nerves, however. He, he looks very calm, very relaxed, and confident. We're going to have some action here. Finally, the bell for round one, and it's Johnson who came running out in a hurry, but not with any serious intention. And here's Aaron Pryor doing something unusual for him, just testing out his legs. Well, both men have to be very careful because they have both big punches in both hands. On Pryor's trunks, an emblem of a hawk, a nickname he favors. And Juan Johnson, known in Detroit circles around the trunk, as Mr. Excitement. Johnson goes to the attack and lands a combination to the head of Pryor. Gets a smile back from the champion. You may see early knockdowns. There it is, right there. Johnson and Ray Leonard. Well, that second, uh, literally a second before now. Pryor saying, I'm fine, gets right up and goes after Dewan Johnson, and that's what we expected too, Gil. Remember, Tim, they were both going to box. Both guys were going to box. Now look what they're doing. Well, as soon as he got hit. You know, Brian is going to risk getting knocked out if he can avoid it, and the only way to do that is to go after his opponent. Stop putting off the ground. Much more of a technician. I think he has better balance, and Brian may go down again. Dewan Johnson with prior to the ropes, and now Aaron ties him up. Now, Dewan should stay on top of Pryor now. Pryor still is a little dazed. Head is not clear. Dewan should take advantage of his opportunity because it might not come again. There he left goes. Hook. He was hurt badly by that left hook. Solid left hook from Johnson. He just missed with that one and another. Pryor hand should be up at this moment because he's vulnerable for left hook. Now it's Pryor on the attack, scoring a combination to the head of Johnson. If this is the slugfest we expected and the crowd responding. I'd like to alert our stations along the line. There'll be a 30 second station break at the end of this round. Round number one. Well, Johnson's in trouble now. He blew an opportunity and Pryor 
being such a very strong puncher, he's going to see a lot of damage done there. Johnson has looked over at our broadcast position twice as to indicate that, hey, uh, fellas, this is just what we expected, isn't it? He's the one who said he didn't expect someone to be standing longer than four rounds. A big right hand from Pryor landed. Oh, Tim, all the tricks and boxing went out the business. They're both throwing those bombs. Less than 30 seconds to go, round one. If I was the second, I'd like to get my fighter back in the corner, no matter which one it is, and calm him down. Just... 20-year-old Duan Johnson. Final seconds of round one. CBS Sports Saturday continues after this word from your local station. It will go that far. The champion in white, the challenger in red, Dewan Johnson. He looks older. He's only 20 from Detroit, Michigan. And now Pryor comes out with his famous fury. But Johnson standing there going toe to toe with him. And he wobbled him with a body punch. And another one. Pryor clowning around, but I think he was hurt by those shots, Ray. Those shots I heard. I think both men are rocking each other. The problem they have here, Tim, is both are trying to upstage the other. Pryor thinks he's invincible. He doesn't think that he can get knocked out. He has more confidence in himself. Even when he's on the floor, he can't wait to get up to get at the other fella. But still, he's always been this way. Even as an amateur, Pryor always had that showmanship in his chest. And here, he can't afford to show. That's absolutely right, Ray. Anybody can get knocked out if they get hit right. And this Johnson can punch. They are both unbeaten. Pryor on a streak of 20 consecutive knockouts. Johnson with 13 KOs in his 17 wins. Again, we'd like to alert our stations along the line. Another 30-second station break coming up at the end of round two. Thomas Hearns looking on from the corner. His stable made of the prompt gym in Detroit. Duan Johnson is very much in this scrap, having knocked down the champion in round one. Good uppercut from Pryor and a left hook back. Well, in Detroit, they call Johnson Mr. Excitement, and boy, he sure is. Well, both men start out at a very fast pace and landed big punches. If this one goes down now, I think it's from fatigue. Well, again, now, stations along the line are going to be your commercial coordinator here. We're not going to a station break at the end of round two. We're going to stay here in Cleveland at the end of the second round. I mentioned if any edge prior would have its maneuverability, he, ma he manages to step to the side, and then he nailed Johnson with a good punch. He's all over the place, Pryor. He's never in front of you. Now, Pryor should show some experience. He has the experience. He should use it instead of just using brute strength. Well, a taller Johnson has shown his strength in that last uh, exchange as he kind of tied up Pryor and leaned on him. Well, he landed a couple of pretty good left hooks, too, Tim. Well, you commented Pryor throws punches from all angles. This is the Golden Gloves final fight. Ray, that's what it looks like. I'd like to see one of them go to the body. I think it would be so much effective. Well, Johnson has dug in a couple of pretty good left hooks underneath, Ray. But he, has, he isn't doing it now, and he's standing straight up, which could be fatal. Under 30 seconds to go in round two. I'm looking for Pryor to throw an overhand right, because Juwan Johnson, kills, he dropped that left hand, and he could be asked for trouble. Go to Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy, Tim Ryan, live in Cleveland for an action-packed junior welterweight title bout. Exactly what we anticipated. A reminder again to the stations, we are not going to a station break. That's the end of round number two. We're going to go back and show you the knockdown punch from Duwan Johnson that came in round number one, startling the champion, but he was up immediately as he was against Cervantes. Oh, you see it, a right hand straight down the pipe, and he caught Pryor coming in. You can't get hit harder than that, Tim. And Pryor was right up and dancing in one second. He was Look at the way he went down. And immediately up. Immediately. He is something else. Looking into the corners, you see Panama Lewis exhorting his champion, uh, perhaps telling him to be, hey, a little bit more careful. Don't keep sticking your chin out there to get hit. Move your head, move your body. Emmanuel Stewart working in the corner of Juan Johnson. We're in the champion's corner at the moment. Aaron Fryer. Ready for round number three. The challenger in red, Duan Johnson. The champion, Aaron Pryor in white. Johnson from Detroit. Pryor from Cincinnati. 
That's the first legitimate jab we've seen either fighter throw and land since the fight started. Well, about, he's beginning to settle down more now. He should have dissed the very first round because that very first round is so critical because you don't know what's going to happen. Definitely a Jack Keogh of Cleveland. stations along the line have been waiting for this information I know yes we're going to go to a station break to tell us here at the end of this third round Mace has finally slowed somewhat we okay. take Duan seems to be waiting for one good oh. punch very very low blow by Duan Johnson but the referees back or still a punch good right hand from Duan Johnson Plows days now Again, Dwan Josh should take advantage of this opportunity because it's very difficult to hear that cry. Right from Pryor, left from Johnson. The big difference I see between these two fellas is that Pryor is so maneuverable. He goes, he can go from side to side, and he, he elevates the head and he lowers the head. Johnson is always straight up. He's always there. You can close your eyes and hit him. If you notice, both fighters, they hesitate from time to time. Now, there is mutual respect now because they've both been hit by dynamite punches. Well, they sure have. Here Ray Leonard with Bill Sainz and Tim Ryan live at ringside. WBA Junior Runaway Championship, 140 pounds. Big right hand by Pryor. But he was wobbled on a counter punch and then lost his balance and is quick to tell everybody he's all right. Sneaky right hand lead by Pryor landed. Under a minute to go, round three. When Pryor throws that right hand, to, if he comes back with the left hook, it will land. Because what happened, Johnson drops that right hand. Good right hand by Johnson, backed up the champion. Now Pryor's really hurt now. This time he's really hurt. Johnson has the champion in trouble, but Pryor Counter-punching back, perhaps by instinct. We'll see how fresh he is momentarily. Less than 30 seconds to go. Round three. He's moving to try to clear his head. Yes, he is, May. He knows he's in trouble. Well, he should continue, Gil, because he needs to clear his head now. He's still in a daze. Right hand from prior landed, but Johnson was not hurt by it. CBS Sports Saturday continues after this word from your local stations. Could work against him today. Well, Tim, I sense a knockout in the making, an upset in the making. Juwan Johnson, the challenger in red, 20 years of age from Detroit, Michigan. But we can't count Pryor Pry out because Pry has power in both hands, whereas he can't able to put a man out with the oh. ball. What a straight right hand by Johnson over Pryor's left hand. Couldn't have hit him harder. Right on the button. One question I think has been answered. Pryor can take a punch, even if he's the victim of a knockout ultimately in this fight. And he has taken some wraps that would have finished some other guys by now. Johnson is, is a sharp shoot. His punches are straight and very effective. Well, he said that he was going to go right down the middle. He said he was going to throw all his punches right down the middle and let Pryor There's throw another big right hand. That wobbled Pryor, Gil. Yes, it did. You notice the way Johnson pushed Pryor. That means he has more power now. He hasn't shaken Pryor's confidence yet, though. That's the amazing thing. Well, Pryor, Pryor believes in himself. Always, Gil. Runaway champion Sugar Ray Leonard with Gil Clancy. Here at ringside. Cleveland, Ohio. Round number four. Another thing that could be a factor here, neither one of these fighters has, has spent too many rounds in the ring because of all of their knockouts. Another big right hand and a second one by Johnson. The point I'm trying to make is if this fight gets into the seventh or eighth round, they both, both may be dead tied. It may look like a slow motion fight. Of, they're letting it all hang out now and they can't do that for 15 rounds. But I know Pryor can knock you out even when he's tired. I've never seen Dewan Johnson really go the distance of knocking the point out. Left hook landed from Johnson. Johnson's winging now. He's trying to punch a little too hard. Under a minute to go, round four. 
Johnson can't afford to keep winning shots, especially missing with a guy like Aaron Proud. Although most of his punches are landing. Been a good round thus far for the challenger. He scored a knockdown in the first round. Now we see Proud using his experience. Under 30 seconds, round four. inside from fire those short punches have affected him final seconds round number four what a war sets he had to get off the floor against snipes last week to hold on to his crown Dewan johnson the challenger here in round number five in the red trunks prior and white tim uh, johnson has had prior hurt three or four times and let him get off the hook if Aaron hurts Johnson, he's not going to get off the hook, because Pryor is one of the best finishes I've ever seen in boxing, once he really gets you hurt. Other than me, Gil. Well, uh, the present company except <laughs> He said one of the best finishers. <laughs> Pryor landed a good right hand to Johnson in that exchange. That is a good point, Gil, and I know, Ray, uh, you know the, the importance of it, because indeed, you know how to do it. What, what is that? Is that an instinct, or... How do you deal with it when you know you got a guy hurt and you got to finish it? Well, you take your time and you put your punches together. And this is the key. I'm quite sure it's like Gil said. Once Pryor hurt Johnson, if he hurts Johnson bad, the fight will end. We're in the fifth round, scheduled for 15. Johnson, if he joined us late, had Pryor down in round one. All right, that right hand was an example. When Johnson had Pryor hurt, instead of throwing correct punches, he started the wing and he started to miss. You have to keep your cool when you have a guy hurt, and then just professionally put him away. Correct, Ray? Yes, now Pryor's taking pop shots now. He's picking the shots, and eventually he's going to start putting his punches together. He'll throw, start throwing a combination. Pryor landed a right hand lead. Johnson just goes toe to toe with him. Pryor with a good combination, backs up Johnson to the ropes. Johnson avoiding the rest of that exchange pretty well. Beautiful head movement on the ropes by Johnson. He got hit with a couple, but Pryor expended a lot of energy. One thing you should watch is the fact that Johnson throws one, two punches. Pryor throws combination. He throws a series, series of punches. Punches are much shorter than Johnson's. Under a minute to go on the fifth round of this slugfest. Riders working right above us, near the corner of the champion prior. Johnson wants the right hand. But now they're coming from too far out. Prior complained earlier about a uh, headbutt, and I think that's a slight abrasion on his, uh, his right eye. Just landed an overhand right. Didn't seem to move, Johnson. The little short punches are far the more effective punches by Pryor. Home run ball tried there by Johnson. He missed it. Final seconds of round number five. I'm frankly surprised it's gone this far. Good right hand. Just been told Missouri leading Oklahoma 19-7. And, of course, you'll get the complete scoring update from Brent Musburger later in our program here on Sports Saturday. This is round six of a tremendous battle thus far. Dewan Johnson, the challenger in red. The junior welterweight champion, Aaron Pryor in white. Pryor is trying to wing. And, 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 excuse me, Johnson's trying to wing, and Pryor's throwing those short punches. That's the difference now. Pryor is starting to get up on top. Well, if the scorecard ever matters, the way we see it, Johnson is handily in front. Indeed, we gave Pryor his first round back in the preceding round number five. But I'm still doubtful this thing is going to go the distance, the way they're throwing him. I haven't found one expert that, that we ran into, Tim, that said it was. Everybody predicted a knockout in this fight. They said it was a referee's fight. They didn't need the judges. Now, Pryor's always made up. He's ripping the body of Johnson, and he's hurting him with those body shots. Sugar Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy, and Tim Ryan. We are live at the Public Auditorium in Cleveland, and these fans are really getting their money's worth. Next.
next week. Alexis Arguello, Roberto Elizondo, WBC Lightweight Championship here on CBS Sports Saturday in Las Vegas. Johnson may be a little onward because he hasn't returned any punches so far except for a little left jab. He got nailed with two good punches right at the end of the last round, Ray. They are just standing there toe-to-toe -to -toe trading those punches. Tremendous stamina and conditioning show by both of them thus far. I, saw, I just saw Johnson took the right hand, and it had nothing behind it. After this point now, pride will come on strong. All right, Ray Leonard sees the tide turning in favor of the champion. Under a minute to go, round six. Pride gripping the body, she's hurting Johnson. Johnson's going to have to get a second win. If he doesn't get a second win, Ray, it will be over in the, in the next part, two rounds, anyhow. Observe when Johnson throws his punches at this point now. Nothing behind him. He's noticed the left hook that Johnson just threw. There was nothing behind him. It was, it was an arm punch. That's exactly no right. Nobody behind him. No zip. Here's where you see Pry at his best. Inside, especially when the opponent's tired and hurt. 30 seconds to go, round number six. Johnson throwing them one at a time. Trying to load up for that one big punch. We're into round number seven. The challenger quickly off his stool to the center of the ring. Aaron Pryor hasn't had to go this far since April of 1980 when he went 10 against Leonidas Aspria, knocking him out in the 10th round. He's had five fights since then. The farthest he's gone is six against Gaetan Hart. For Dewan Johnson, it was December 6th of 1980, and that was six fights ago since he went more than four rounds. Ray, uh, any significance to that? Not really. I think uh, this fight is going to decide on who's in better shape. Who do you think is? Both of them are in great shape. Johnson, the challenger, has been on the attack early in this seventh round. Hill. Well, when the bell rang, Pryor went back to that first round strategy of circling around, circling around, and he got nailed again the same way he did in the first round. Now he's back flat-footed again. There has been one knockdown. It came in the first round. Johnson sending the champion to the canvas. He was up immediately. has by far the better hand speed, and he puts his punches together better. Uh, as, as you said, Ray, uh, Duhon land, uh, loads up on one punch, but when, when Aaron hits you, he hits you four or five times. I thought it was the same thing, Gil. Pryor pushes punches together quite Oh, well. big right hand, big right hand by Pryor. Now Aaron Johnson, he's in trouble. Now you watch Pryor. Now you watch a finisher. Johnson doing pretty well again, bobbing and weaving on the ropes, but he is still very wobbly. And Pryor's non-stop here. Can't get his hands up, and that's going to be it. The referee, Keo steps in, and Aaron Pryor, with startling suddenness in the seventh round, has retained his junior welterweight championship with a knockout victory over the challenger number two in the world, Duwan Johnson. A tremendously exciting slugfest, as expected. A great effort by the challenger, had the champion down in the first round, but as Sugar Ray Leonard and Gil Clancy kept indicating, from about the fifth round on, Pryor was turning the tide, and when he hits you and gets you in trouble, forget it. School's out. Stewart was upset with Johnson after the bout, angry that Dewan had stopped punching after the first few rounds. You don't win like that, Stewart said. It was the easiest title fight we've ever had and the most frustrating experience I've ever had. Johnson and Stewart had a falling out as Dewan didn't think he was being treated fairly. There were two years remaining on his contract, but Stewart didn't hold him to it. Johnson set out on his own with the help of his father James, but Dewan terminated that arrangement and signed with Don King. Eight months after the defeat to Pryor, Johnson was upset by Nanny Marrero in New York, losing a decision. According to Stewart, the loss angered King so much that he began trying to pawn off Johnson's contract to anyone interested. In December of 1982, Johnson stepped into the ring with Milton Mad Dog Guest. You notice uh, Dwan Johnson's now starting to carry that uh, left hand down low. That's more of a slip and a kind of off balance. And, but now here, Guest is pouring it on a bit. 
Neither fighter has been down. Johnson's a little bit puffy around the eyes. Guest doesn't look marked at all. Johnson just took three, three good jabs that time. He shouldn't take those punches. Just took a good right hand. He just got to throw punches back. You, it's easy for a man to throw punches if you don't throw them back. Good left hook scored that time. Another low blow thrown by Dwayne Johnson. Johnson just threw a good left hook to the body. It's really good. You know, one thing about the name uh, Dwan Johnson, half his friends call him Dwayne, half of them call him Dwan, and half of them just call him Johnson. So he, he likes to be, he, and he doesn't care. He says, you call me Dwayne, you can call me Dwan. So uh, it's, it's strange. That's what I do, Bob. I've known him for a while, and I call him Dwayne. I call him Johnson. I call him, you know, and he just got here with a good left hook. Good body shot. Yes, hit him with a good body shot. See, D. Wayne is just standing there, taking the shots, and he can't just stand there. He just got to come forward, be a little bit more aggressive. Johnson has got uh, Bill Present, who actually works with you, Larry, in his corner. Also, uh, James Johnson, and I think he's managed by Carl King, the promoter's son. And Carl has come a long way in, uh, in working with fighters, too. And uh, uh, so uh, they, I'm sure, would like to see Duan get, get moving here. But so far, Milton Guest has been a very formidable opponent. Yes, he has. And... Uh, Dwayne's going to lose his fight if he don't do something in a hurry. Carl King is a very capable uh, manager. He's starting to put fighters together, and he's learning a lot, so he's, this is good for boxing. Real good job of counterpunching that time as Johnson comes on, and Guest is just scoring. Good left hook to the body, and another good left hook to the body. Johnson just trying to duck punches, but some of those punches are landing. He just can't stand there. Now he's on the ropes. He got to get off those ropes. Oh, a good left hook that time, Larry. Real good left hook landed by Milton Guest. And Johnson's in trouble. He's in serious trouble. Now he's hurt. He may just get through this round. We're coming up to the closing seconds of round three. With round number four in this scheduled ten-round welterweight fight featuring Dwan Johnson. Again, it's Dwan Johnson in the blue trunks, Milton Guest in the white trunks. And to this point, unofficially, I have it scored with Guest winning all three of the first three rounds. Johnson's still shaking up yet from that last punch. Milton got to keep the pressure on him like he's doing, and he's probably going to take Johnson out of there because uh, Johnson just standing open, wide open, taking shots. You notice how uh, Johnson's hands are much lower too, Larry, and you pointed that out earlier, that guy's got to keep the hands up high when you're fighting a taller fighter. Remember, there's two inches in uh, height advantage for Milton and Mad Dog Guest. Another good right hand lands, an uppercut connects, another uppercut connects. Oh, another left hook. That one almost dropped due on to the canvas. Johnson is a veteran, though. You've seen him just switch around and duck those punches and whatnot. He's hurt, but he still is capable to keep his mind a little clear there, to duck those punches. Well, that certainly is the ring experience. But he's getting hit, Bob. What he got to do, he's got to put the pressure on him and stick that jab, use his own jab, and now stand in there up against the ropes because that's where you get hurt at. Tries to come back with a light left, but uh, the straight right, uh, straight left hand gets right through on him. And he's taking some really good shots here. Yes, he is, Bob. He's taking a lot of shots, and that's not really no good. But he's throwing. He's determined, and he's going for that one shot. He just missed with that overhand right that time. Left hand. Neither fighter has been down, but Dwan Johnson has been staggered a couple of times. Another right hand catches him. Now he's trying to become the aggressor. See, some of these body shots, Larry, are really, I think, taking their toll on him much more than what most people would think a body shot can do to a guy. A body shot, body punches will wear you down. It will catch up to you sooner or later. And Johnson should get off those ropes right now and fight back and keep this guy in the center ring and back this guy back. You can tell that uh, Dwan Johnson has the heart of a, of a guy that should be fighting for the championship because he's been tagged really hard in the second round and he gets off a real good right hand there. Another good right hand. Two overhand rights. Now, what should Guest be doing now, Larry? Guest should be out in the center of the ring using his long arms, using his jabs and whatnot and trying to back Johnson up because Johnson is a veteran. He's, he's not going to get tired. He's been this way before. He's been here before and he knows what he's doing. Uh, Milton don't have that experience yet. Oh, why with that left hand that just almost took his nose off. Again, neither fighter has been down. 
and both guys really fighting their heart out. Some heavy blows being landed here in round number four. A welterweight battle, Duan Johnson, again in the blue trunks, trying to make an effort to come back here a bit. Lost a few points in the first three rounds, had a pretty good fourth round, and now he'd like to see if he can take over. Again, the five-point must-scoring system in effect here in the state of Illinois. What they're doing now, Bob, just trading punches right above us, and uh, Dewan is giving his head just to land those body shots. Maybe he sees something that we don't see, but I know that I would not give my head up out there. Well, definitely the momentum in the fight, Larry, has switched around because in the first three rounds, the guest really uh, came out and took charge, even though he scored that one. Dewan just seems to have no respect for the punching power. He's, he's willing to take one to get one. Of course, uh, Milton is losing his punching power, and Dewan don't took his best shot. He feels that he can't hurt him, so he is walking in. But you should never feel that a fighter can't hurt you because anybody is capable of knocking you out. Well, this has turned into a pretty darn good war. Glad that you folks can be with us because you're watching a pretty fair country fight at the right hand land. Johnson is really determined. He's starting to put a lot of pressure on Milton. He's coming forward, he's taking punches, but like I said earlier, he's landing them too. For the first time I see uh, Milton Guest lower jaw hanging down, meaning that he's using his mouth to suck in the air. Real good right hand lands by the ear of Milton Guest. This is a real good fight here, Bob. We see a fight here. These guys are really trying to win. Johnson is throwing punches to the body like he's trying to Take his rib off. He got hit with a good right hand. Another left hook Johnson got hit with. He's kind of hurt now, Bob. He's his hurt. His legs are wobbly, and maybe Guess better take the opportunity to put him away, although the funny thing is, Dewan Johnson comes back with a smile, but his legs definitely are rubbery, Larry. Yes, there is, but Johnson still got that experience that he can hold on and, and survive, but he can't continue to take punches clearly like that. And Milton seems a little tired, too, Bob. He's a round. little wobbly, is right. Johnson might be hurt, but he's still got that energy. Look at the combination of punches he throwed that time. Another combination. Johnson is going for it. Left hook by Johnson. Johnson is cut, Bob, over the right eye. Yes, he is. He's split wide open. Ooh! He just let everything go that time. Yes, he did. But guess does the scoring. Another left hook. He's Another hurt left hook he's and right. Johnson is hurt, Bob. He's definitely hurt. The referee going to stop this soon if he don't fight. Johnson got to come back on it. Right no hand good. scores a left. He hasn't no been down yet, but he's taking a lot of shots. No good. He's standing on the ropes. And that's like that. it. The referee stops the fight with Dewan Johnson bleeding. Milton Guest. It'll be scored as a fifth round TKO for Milton Guest. He upsets Dewan Johnson. Johnson fought only two times over the next two years and fell into heroin addiction. On September 19, 1984, Johnson was shot dead over a $20 debt on a street in Detroit. He was 23 years old. Floyd Logan, one of the Kronk's coaches, said, quote, I don't know much about what he did away from here, but I knew him and his people and just don't know what to say about this. It was real sad to hear.